To live the life is to live in warfare. To live the life biblically is to be a witness. To live the life biblically is to see the wonder of God in yours and our midst. I am such a blessed pastor, such a blessed missionary to be able to say to you that as we now read and see God show up in the most powerfully miraculous ways, I know this place. I pray and know that many of you know this place. When you're living the life Truly living the life, not playing church, not being religious, not trying to build a churchy resume, but when you're living the life, you will see Almighty God show up as Lydia did, as Timothy did, as Paul himself did, as every single true Christian has, because there is no salvation outside of the wondering wow effects of God and His Spirit. Listen to what happens in verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell before Paul and Silas. Say, Pastor Jeff, where's the wonder? Where's the wow? Okay, so it sounds like they had an earthquake. Well, that may be what a skeptic will tell you. But let me just show you what we see here in God's word that is undeniably revealing to us the wonder and the wow effect of the God we worship. You see, at just the right time and in just the right place, this immediate earthquake comes just as they're praying, just as they're praising, just as their witness has the attention of all within the prison. And what happens? When I've seen earthquakes... When you've seen earthquakes, buildings collapse. Things happen. You've never, I promise, seen an earthquake that caused every door to swing open, especially not in a prison. You've never seen an earthquake that in its selective effects on just the doors also supernaturally opens up all the locks on all the shackles. Friends, it says here in God's word that all the doors all the people, all the locks, supernaturally open. This is a work of God, and only God can do it. But we're just getting started here in the wonder and the wow. Because I want to ask you this. So you're in prison, wrongfully beaten, abused, tortured. You're in the midst of praising God and praying to him. And all of a sudden, everything opens up to you. The doors open, your locks come off as we like to sing. He's broken every chain. Nothing is holding you back. Where are you going? Right? If this is the NFL, you tell me, We're, I'm going to Disney World. Where are you going in this situation? Where's Paul go? Where does Silas go? They go nowhere. They stay right there. And I tell you, therein you see another demonstration of God's miraculous work. Why? Because everything in yours and my flesh would say, run, run fast, run now, run far. And everybody else in that prison would be doing the same. But not here. Why? Because God had a plan. And he was working on the soul of a jailer. And God knew what you and I don't know and could never know. He knew what he was doing. Paul, Paul's the one who, remember, listens. He pays attention to detail. He's accurate in following the Lord. He goes when the Lord says go, and he stays when the Lord says stay. And he doesn't take matters into his own hands. And because of that, the jailer who was going to commit suicide, because in his day, if a jailer lost a single prisoner, they would typically be killed or at least take the penalty that was on that person that got away. The jailer says, oh my goodness, all the doors are open. I'm sure they're all gone. And Paul says, no, stay, wait. 
Don't hurt yourself. Note this, the selflessness of Paul. I will stay and be imprisoned wrongfully rather than let you get hurt or do harm to yourself regardless of what you've done to me. I've forgiven you before you asked. I loved you when you were unlovely. I'm an ambassador of Christ. I'm in this prison cell, not because somebody else took over for the Lord, but because he's sovereignly in charge. And I know, says Paul, as he would later write, that God is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So even right here in this Philippian jail, God's doing a work. I'm his hands and his feet. I'm his lips and his fingertips. And it appears that he wants to touch you, jailer. Wow. Wow. This is God at work. This is miraculous mercy. This is missional living. This is living the life, staying behind when the doors fling open because God wants to use you to save one who you might not have otherwise thought was savable or save worthy. He wants to use you as his extension of love to one that you in the world would say is unlovely. This is living the life. Friends, I pray that you see. Paul, Paul's living a surrendered life. He is, in fact, a slave to his Lord, Jesus. He's a blessed slave. I ask you, are you in the midst of God's miraculous power? Are you being used as his hands and his feet, his lips and his fingertips? I got to tell you, friends, if you, if you cannot honestly say yes, if you are not actively engaged in what God is doing in the miraculous realm, then I fear that you, friend, may need a earthquake of your own. And I, I plead with you again to come. Come. Come to Christ for the first time. Or if you're a Christian who's living on the sidelines, I, I plead with you to come. Come and get back into the mainstream of God's vision. Come live the life with your Lord. Because I have to tell you, friends, he comes. Sometimes he comes like a lion and sometimes he comes like a lamb. And as one who has seen him in both ways, I promise you, you'll prefer to see him at least initially without the earthquakes. Will you come? Will you come? If you come and in the midst of living the life, you say, well, it's going to involve warfare. My witness is is apparently extremely important. And where and when I am living this out, I'm going to see the wonder of God as he controls everything in the universe. And, and note this, friend, if you're on mission and you're finding that you're in a tough spot, don't lose sight of the fact that you represent the king who controls creation. And take from this that if and when God wants you free, there isn't anybody that's going to keep you in chains. God literally shook the earth and supernaturally broke chains and opened locks and doors because he wanted to demonstrate his love. Friend, you and I don't have to worry about the circumstances around us. We don't have to worry about what's happening in creation. We need to focus on Christ, our king, and live the life of the mission he's given us.